In this video, I demonstrate the monopoly problem. I then show how a monopoly chooses its price and quantity, and I'll work an example to demonstrate what a monopoly is, what it does, and how specifically you can work a monopoly problem. A monopoly is a firm that has an industry all to itself. Uh, so when we were talking about a competitive firm or a competitive industry, uh, we had a whole bunch of firms that were competing with one another, and they just had to take the prices given. With a monopoly, things are different because the firm is the only one in the industry, so it gets to see the entire demand curve for the industry. So the first difference between a monopoly and a competitive firm is that the monopoly takes the demand curve as given, a competitive firm just took the price from the equilibrium in the market as given. So the monopoly can choose any price quantity pair that corresponds to a point that's on the demand curve. So at price P1, the monopolist can sell quantity 1. And what that means is that the monopolist gets P1, the height of this box, times Q1, the width of this box. So geometrically, the monopolist's revenue is this box. Now what happens if the monopolist wants to sell one more unit of the goods, say Q2, which is Q1 plus 1? And so we see that the monopolist, in order to sell more, has to decrease its price. Now this leads to a trade-off for the monopolist. The revenue is just this blue box now that corresponds to the new price and the new quantity. Uh, so let's go ahead and shade that in. There is a component of the revenue that the monopolist gained. That's this part of the box here that we, uh, we got from selling more units. But there is a part of the revenue that was lost. It's because the monopolist sells all of the units at the same price. When he decreases the price to attract more people to come, he loses revenue on all of the units of, of the good, all of the people who would have previously bought it at the higher price. So in terms of the letters on this graph, the monopolist revenue for selling Q1 units of the good is just A plus B. The monopolist revenue for selling Q units of the good is B plus C. Now, notice the difference between these two is going to be the marginal revenue because Q2 is just one more than Q1. Okay, so total revenue before was A plus B. Total revenue after was B plus C. So by how much did our revenue increase? And so our marginal revenue is this area C minus this area A. And notice that this area C is just the height of the demand curve. So if we were to actually draw something that was like marginal revenue on this graph, it's going to be something that's below the demand curve. But this is going to be an important object. When we're thinking about the benefit of increasing the quantity, revenue for a firm is the benefit of increasing the quantity. So we can use that idea to think about what will a monopolist do when it wants to set the optimal quantity? So all of that previous discussion was to say that the marginal revenue for a monopolist, the amount of revenue that the monopolist gets, is actually less than the demand curve. Because to expand output, you have to depress the price. So why do we care so much about marginal revenue? It just uses the equimarginal principle. What is the marginal benefit of producing an additional unit? That's just marginal revenue. What is the marginal cost? We can get the marginal cost function from what we know about firms. So if we had a marginal cost, that would tell us what would be the appropriate quantity for the monopolist. So now we have marginal revenue, marginal cost. And we can think about this monopolist as setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost to determine the quantity. Now that would be the monopolist quantity, but the price actually comes from the demand curve. So that's what a monopolist does. It sets marginal revenue equal to marginal cost to get the quantity. It evaluates the quantity, the inverse demand curve, figures out what price corresponds to that quantity. So that's how a monopolist prices. Another thing you want to think about in the background is that a monopolist is just a firm. So we could compute profits just in the same way that we computed profits before. All we need is to have is an average cost curve. So here's, here's our average cost curve, and just as before, what we do is we go from the price down to the average cost curve. We trace that out and get a box for our profit. 
So there are all the elements of a monopolist problem. As far as the operational, what does a monopolist do? Uh, how do you compute a monopolist profit? What is the price? What is the quantity? This is the graph that tells you everything about what a monopolist does. So it might be a little abstract at this point, so let's do a particular example. Okay, so imagine that you are a monopolist and that you are facing a demand curve of 10 minus Q. The marginal revenue in this case will have the same intercept but twice the slope. Notice that will put it below the demand curve uh, for no matter what uh, quantity we're talking about. And so that should concord with our intuition, but it turns out mathematically to be true. Now the first step is to find the quantity. Now, as we said before, the equimarginal principle tells us to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. So marginal revenue equals marginal cost, we can go ahead and solve for quantity. So 4Q equals 10, Q equals 2.5. Now graphically, how does this look? Well, there's our marginal revenue curve, same intercept, twice the slope. Our marginal cost here is just a straight line, and they intersect at a quantity of 2.5. Now, what is the price? Now, what do we plug in to get the price? That's the second step. Now, you might be tempted to plug 2.5 back into either marginal cost or marginal revenue. Don't. If you do that, what you'll get is you'll get the number that is right here at the intersection of marginal revenue and marginal cost. That is not the price. The price is to go all the way up to the demand curve and evaluate the demand curve at Q equals 2.5. So let's go ahead and do that, and we get a price of 7.5. Just subtracting 2.5 from 10. And we notice what we would have done if we had gotten it wrong, is we would have evaluated at what the marginal cost was. If we plugged in 2.5 into marginal cost, we would have gotten 5. And you would have made a mistake if you had done that. So the price is going to be 7.5, the quantity is going to be 2.5. Now, step three is to figure out, well, what are the profits? Now, as we determined before, profits are price minus average cost times quantity. And we want to evaluate what the monopolist profits are at the maximum. Now, what we'll have to do is we'll have to plug in to figure out, well, what is the monopolist's uh, average cost? So let's go ahead and do that off to the side. So here we evaluate at Q equals 2.5 we'll get 3 divided by 2.5, plus 2.5. Now if you get your calculator out, 3 divided by 2.5 is 1.2. 1.2 plus 2.5 is 3.7. So if we were to go over here to this graph, our average cost at 2.5 equals 3.7. And you remember from before that this is going to be a place where average cost is below marginal cost. Marginal cost is above average cost, that means that average cost is increasing in this range. And remember that average cost is at a minimum at, uh, where it crosses marginal cost. So our average cost in this case looks like this U-shape that we typically have. So there's a graphical depiction of what's going on here. Now, what is going to be our actual profit? Numerically, let's go ahead and compute it. Well, the price, as we deduced, was 7.5. The Average cost is 3.7. And we computed the quantity to be 2.5. So if you get your calculators out, this is going to be 3.8 times 2.5. Now that's a profit of 9.5, $9.50. So what does that look like on the graph? That area is going to be this blue rectangle. And this blue rectangle goes all the way out to the quantity, from the average cost up to the price. And so there we have it. We have an example of how to compute all the different things that you would ever want to know about a monopoly. But this gives you the, the basics of how do you solve a monopoly problem. If, if you're given a demand curve, marginal cost, and average costs, you can go ahead and use this method to solve any monopoly problem that, that, uh, that could be dreamt up. Well, just so long as our demand curve is a straight line. Um, so there you have it. That's how you go and work a monopoly problem.